afternoon YouTube. Chips O'Toole here. I'm still thinking about changing my YouTube name. I changed the name of the channel. I decided to call it Heaven on Wheels. And the reason for that, first of all, I think Chips O'Toole is kind of a rip-off name. I stole it from a movie. And uh, the other thing is my, my shop. I, I'm trying to put everything on wheels. I think you have to be nuts not to have everything possible in your workshop on wheels because it, it expands your workshop. It makes it seem much larger than it really is. There's some guy on the Internet. I guess there's more than one, but I've seen one. A guy took a bridge port and put it on a mobile base. There's somebody I admire. He's got an 1,800-pound machine that he can push around like a drill press. So anyway, uh, Heaven on Wheels, that's, my name of the, that's the name of the channel for today. Maybe tomorrow it'll be something else. This is uh, what I hope will be, well, I don't know about the final chapter, but I'll get some kind of closure here on the, uh, oh, i got to get something to point with, on the uh, arbor press, on the arbor press stand. Here we go, this is all I could find. So this is my arbor press stand that I just finished welding. This is my Chinese arbor press, it was 135 bucks on eBay. This is one area where you can save a lot of money on, uh, when it comes to tools. As far as I can tell, everybody I've talked to says cheap arbor press, expensive arbor press, no difference. The things you're pressing can't tell, you know. So you you can go out and buy yourself a Famco or something for 800 bucks, or you can buy this for 130, and uh, works the same. So I'm really happy with it. It's never caused me any problems. It's heavy though. It's like 130 pounds, and it needed something to roll around on. I was trying to clean up my shop. I you know, moved up here from uh, South Florida, and there's junk everywhere especially now that I got my machine tools up here and I, I just couldn't clean up the shop until I did something with this so uh, it was in the way it was, it was on the floor and I kept tripping over it so I, I welded up this stand for it and I took the anvil I think that this plate on it is called an anvil I'm not too sure this thing that looks like a I don't know iron cross or whatever you want to call it um, it had a bunch of uh, crud sticking out into it where it was cast badly and I ground that off so I'm really happy with this. When I made it before, it, it wobbled a little bit because there were warps. And uh, even though I did everything I could to avoid warping, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I just do what people tell me on the Internet. So I, I, it, it was warped a little bit, and it really it was only off by, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or something, three-eighths of an inch. It, but it bugged me. So I took it apart. I took, I took everything. The, the bottom part down there I left together. But this part up here, I, I took the top off, and I added... Uh, let me see if I can do this. I added these uh, cross members here, this one inch tubing. And there's also uh, a tube across, well, underneath it, there's tubes going across it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's one here at the, at the back, and there's one up here at the front. So uh, that kept the upper plate from warping. And another thing I did was I just tried to use smaller welds. You know, I learn everything th that I know from YouTube because that's basically my only resource. And people on YouTube tell you a lot of things about welding, a lot of useful stuff, and it's nice of them to put free material up. But there's a lot of stuff they don't really talk about. When uh, when you see people weld on, on YouTube, typically you'll see them weld. Th when they're demonstrating welds, they'll weld like a, a six-inch continuous weld, you know, like you're supposed to do that. Uh, or they'll Or if they have a project that needs welding, they'll weld all the way around it. And, you know, they're welding something that's not really important. So it's either a demonstration part they're going to throw out or something that doesn't have to be straight. And they don't tell you that if you do that in real life, you're going to get warpage that's crazy. And in real life, you, you don't need six-inch welds unless you're welding something really massive, you know. Most of the time, I mean, I hate to put it this way because I'll get, I'll get flack for this. Most of the time, tack welds will do, you know. I'm not recommending you put your project together with tack welds. But what I'm saying is this, this stuff this stuff I welded with is like 70,000 pounds per, per square inch ten, tensile strength. And, uh, you know, I was putting two or three square inches on something that's going to get, what, like 50 pounds of, uh, of force on it during its lifetime. So it was a little bit of overkill. So anyway, so I, I did smaller welds on it. And let me, maybe I can show it to you. Let me see if I can do this. I'm going to... Ah, it's difficult. Let me see. I have to pick up the tripod like like an ape. Yeah, here we go. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. There's little bitty welds in there. They're you know pretty short. They're not nearly as long as uh, as the original weld. So 
that's the story with that. And I also did a lot of grinding. What I always say is, not everybody can be a great welder, but everybody can be a great grinder. So I did some wells that were frankly crummy, and then ground them off so they look nice and flat. And what I'm thinking of doing is, I, I've got a can of Bondo. I'm thinking of smushing some Bondo in there, and then uh, I'll paint over it. And when people look at it later on, I'll just say, oh, yeah, I'm just a great welder. You know, your wells suck. Look at mine. They're beautiful. So, uh, I mean, that's what they do in Detroit. They've been doing it for 100 years. So, um, this is the story. Now, I'm thinking about, well, where's my pointer? I'm thinking about putting a thing here to catch brooches. When I broach, you know, they fall, and you don't want your expensive Minuteman brooches hitting the ground. Um, so, a, in the front, you know, a lot of these commercial press things, have like a a bin to hold your uh, <clears throat> brooches when they fall. I was thinking about making a, a rectangular, you know, pan kind of a thing, and that would give me an opportunity to use my finger brake, and that'd be fun. But now I'm thinking that's that's stupid. I should just take I should get like a, a piece of three inch pipe, weld a cap in one end, and just put a couple of bars on it to hold it up, and just put a you know a piece of pipe to catch stuff, and I can rig it up so it can it's detachable, so it won't get in the way when I put something long under this. Uh, a lot of people are going to look at this and they're going to say, that's stupid, it's not sturdy, it won't fall over. All I can tell you is, come over to my house and swing on that arm and see if you can turn it over. I can't. So, uh, it, it, it seems like it's going to work out. It looks like it's pretty safe. Uh, one of the things I love about welding is you can take... You, it's something you really... It's hard to do with wood. With welding, you can make things look solid and smooth and friendly when they're actually sharp and ragged and, you know, nasty. Um... Uh, these things here at the bottom, these are just tubes, you know, one by three inch tubes, and they were open. And I didn't want a big hole sitting there, you know. You, you look in there and you see the rust and you see the rough ed edges from the uh, from the dry cut saw and all that, and you see the welds inside the tube. These tube, you know, tubing is always welded at the factory, at the foundry or wherever it is that it comes from, the steel mill. So what I did was I got myself some one inch um, bar, some one inch by one, one eighth bar, and I made these little caps for the ends, and I welded around, and then I just took the angle grinder and ground it smooth so it looks like it's a solid bar. And that was pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of that. The wheels are from Amazon, you know, 20 bucks. The, the fasteners, I got at Tractor Supply. I've learned my lesson about factor. Oh, I'm missing a washer there. Well, anyway, uh, I learned my lesson about fasteners. You, you never buy fasteners any place except Tractor Supply because Tractor Supply sells them for $3 a pound. And if you go to, like, Ace Hardware... They're, if you're one of the few people, one of the one of the few cavemen who still goes to Ace Hardware, you know it's like twenty cents for one bolt, and you start adding that up. I mean, I I did something like this before my uh, bench grinder mobile base, and that was like twenty bucks or something for just for the fasteners, and this thing was like dollar and a half. So uh, always go to always go to Tractor Supply if you got one near you. What else do I need to tell you? I also learned some things about washers. I've learned that uh, lock washers don't actually work. You know, you see the lock washers on everything, and you think, well, engineers put these things on there. They must know something. But, you know, think of all the things engineers have designed that have failed, that have caused you misery and suffering in your life, and you realize, well, you know, maybe maybe you shouldn't put quite as much faith in them as you have been. It's like it's like this. Think people who go to cooking school think they're all brilliant. They think they're wonderful chefs. And if you know someone who went to cooking school, you think they're think that person's a genius. Well, I know a lot of people who went to cooking school, and I'm a much better cook than all of them. And think about this: How many times have you gone to a restaurant and had a bad meal? A huge percentage of those meals were prepared by people who went to cooking school. So I'm digressing. I don't know. Um, what I'm trying to tell you is, it turns out lock washers don't actually work. You can look this up on the internet. And uh, the Internet will flat out say, in tests, lock washers don't do any better than just sticking a, a nut on something. So that's irritating. So I didn't put lock washers on this. I just put flat washers on it. And the reason I put flat washers on is, number one, it looks better. It covers up any screw-ups that I made. And number two, it, you know, it spreads out the force, and it doesn't gouge up the metals badly. So that's nice. So uh, what I think I'm going to do from now on is I'm just going to put blue Loctite on everything. I mean, why not? It, it, it prevents it from seizing. It does a pretty good job of preventing stuff from falling out. Um, defeats corrosion, probably defeats galling when you're joining something like aluminum and stainless. I don't know. That's a good guess. So uh, I know this is controversial. Look it up yourself. I'm not I'm not making it up. Lock washers, no. I am done with lock washers. So basically finished with this project. I haven't painted it yet because I haven't done the 
the catch can or whatever you want to call it. Um, I might conceivably put a handle on the other side for wheeling it around. The swivels, the swiveling casters on the far side, they're on the side of it, you know, like a toolbox. You know how toolboxes are? They, they don't have the swiveling casters on the front. They have them on the side. So I might put a bar on that side, you know, just so I can lead it around easier. But it, it's basically done. I'm really thrilled with it. So uh, my next thing that's happening is uh, I ordered a Gorton 375 tool and cutter grinder. And uh, I don't know when it'll be here. I, it hasn't been shipped yet, so I would guess at least a week it'll take to get here. And this is a really neat thing. I looked at a Stefan Goddess Winter. Please, if you speak German, don't don't give me a hard time. I don't I don't know how to pronounce Goddess Winter. Uh, anyway, a Stefan, or maybe it's Stefan, like like when Urkel, you know, on on Family, whatever that show was, uh, when he turned into the cool guy who actually women liked, you know, he pronounced his name Stefan. Maybe maybe uh, it's Stefan Goddess Winter. Uh, which means he's really, really good with chicks, but I don't know. Um, he had a great video with a uh, featuring a Chinese... Oh, I dropped my pointer. I can't talk without the pointer. He had a great video featuring his Chinese single-lip grinder, which is like a, a really uh, low-end decal-type grinder, which works really well. And I got all excited. I watched that video, and then I started researching and researching, and I found out I could I could either get a Chinese job for, like, you know, 1200 bucks, or I could get a really nice old American tool and cutter grinder that would do virtually anything for about the same price. So uh, that's what I did. Um, I looked into things like Decal, and I looked into stuff like, uh, um, who else makes one? K.O. Lee tool and cutter grinders. Those are neat, but there's, they tend to be really worn out, and they're really big and heavy. I found a, a, something called a Pratt & Whitney R8, which looks fantastic. I just, I don't know, though. It's really big. I, I wasn't really ready to commit to another 800-pound machine. The the Gorton is like uh, 450 or something. I just, it, I just, I guess it's irrational. The the Pratt & Whitney is probably a phenomenal machine, and it looked like it, it looked like it had just basically been taken from the factory and put in a closet and never used. Uh, who knows? Maybe some, maybe I'll actually spring for it. But anyway, I've got the Gorton on the way, and I'm hoping to modify uh, end mills and, and renew my old crummy lathe cutters. I wish I had known that carbide inserts could be renewed because God only knows how many of them I've thrown out. So that's the next thing on the menu, I guess. So, um, you know, hope you've enjoyed the Arbor Press stand and, um, it came out really well. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. So, uh, I don't recommend you use this design yourself, you know, because this, this design started out very differently and I wanted to put a shelf down here, which I still may, um, I think I, you got to understand that when I started out, I had a certain design in mind, and I designed the overall thing with all these little features in mind, and then I started eliminating features, and I still had this design that was based on accommodating those features. So I don't know if I can recommend this, but it does work. So uh, I don't know. I guess that's all I got to say. So I, I guess I'll see you next time here at Heaven on Wheels.